Hello guys, Nacho Ace here, and I want to give my thoughts on more info for Concord. So this has already been talked about it. I want to talk about the situation behind it, not so much of the game because that's already been done. Even I give my thoughts about it. I think the idea behind it wasn't really malicious. It's just that you have to think basically you can't have your cake and eat it too. That's really what I'm trying to say. You know, if wishing something like that, those are set sick that people can't relate and you want to make money out of it. And if it doesn't work, this is what happened. It's kind of like equivalent to, I hate to go here. You try to touch fire, you can't touch fire because you can get burned. So it's something like that. So of course, you've been following this story. Of course, uh, Colin Moriarty told a story from an insider who worked with Concord said, yeah, apparently there was even more than meets the eye. So the budget for this one now is 400 million. And that's even before Sony decided to purchase Firewalker. Again, nothing wrong with that, I don't see. And the risk is really bad. Like high risk and low reward, that's a bad sign. That's definitely like a bad sign. You don't want that. And that, yeah, like $400 million. And that's even, like I said, that's, I don't know that includes the 200 million from Sony, but that's a lot of money. And of course you get a full refund if you know what happened there. So Carl basically said that not only costs a lot, but the work environment when they were doing Concord is concerning. It is really concerning because, yeah, so I'm gonna be a little bit political here, so just bear with it. Now, if you notice when there's like a criticism, a lot of these people who make their product doesn't do good. Instead of, well, we tried, we didn't learn. I hope we learn our lesson. We'll learn from the next time. We'll try it again, whatever, because of course you can't because a lot of this company now, they're doing low risk. I mean, it is what it is. It's not like the 90s. Instead of saying that, you know, we screwed them, whatever, you know, just be honorable about it. They're like, oh, it's the people, the reaction. We shouldn't have that reaction. That was unnecessary. They ruined it. Our thoughts about that one is, come on, dude. Be honorable about it. Be a man about it. Have some pride. Don't find any excuses that, oh, because of X, Y, Z, because your ABC lost. Really, I mean, you know that it's not gonna work. You have a feeling behind it and you're just trying to double down because I know I get it. Pride, maybe mental state that if you admit that, hey, look, you know, we screwed up, what's gonna happen? Oh, that's right, then we look like a fool. And I guess your pride or ego, I don't know. So anyway, beside the 400 million that caused for this game that failed, the reason I was talking about some sort of like the reaction is apparently there's also a thing called toxic positivity. So this is what I'm saying is very concerning now that now apparently now in this time of age, you can't criticize the game because of concerns such as like I said, aesthetic. Again, maybe to some to some extent I kinda understand because oh it's not gonna sell why oh just because they put a fat lady in no per nothing personal, no hate. But you know what I'm trying to say is that, oh, you put something like that, oh, it's not gonna sell. Why? Because, oh, there's a big lady, big bone lady. You know what I mean? I'm big bone, like I said. And that you can't really voice your concern about that. Like you can't say anything bad. And then you just go with it and look what happened. You got Concord, you got Dustpoint, a lot of those. I mean, if it's your vision, that's fine. But to some extent, uh, you gotta be open-minded, be mindful with that. Is it gonna sell? Be compromised. A lot of time is they don't do that anymore. So what is this toxic positivity? Well, according to Colin, is when you're not allowed to criticize your project no matter what, which is kind of dumb. Because when I was in college and I took in the media arts program, one of the most important thing we always do is to learn, take critique and understand the criticism. All of a sudden now, this new generation, I guess I can call it that, now the rule is you're not supposed to do that because it might hurt their mental state. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Or some people said hurt their feelings. Uh, unfortunately, my recording got cut off, so I'm gonna continue here via audio. So anyway, like I said, this toxic positivity is to something dangerous because now 
you're not supposed to quote unquote criticize someone that basically say, hey, this might not be a great idea. A lot of time criticism is to help improve the product. So why are they not allowed to criticize Concord? Well, my theory behind it, and like I said, the game itself, if you just look at it in the perspective of just the design, not really the politics behind it, the character model to some extent, it might not be to your liking, it might not be to your aesthetic, but if you just look at it in the perspective of a business, the character model, like the architect, the design, the proportion, the shape, whatever, like it's good. It's really high tech. I mean, it could be also to be in a animated series, television, whatever. And like I said, it is good quality, but the problem with Concord is the game doesn't relate to the gamer. So unfortunately, this is something that is live and probably a lot of these employees are kind of frustrated. Why he said that even we do everything good about the product, how come it doesn't sell? If it doesn't kind of resonate to the consumer that's giving you money, it is going to suck. It's going to be like, oh, man, that suckers. Again, it goes with a bit. I hate to go here. YouTube video. Somebody who might be popular, let's go with that. And does something like, it's not of a good quality, but it's interesting and it's entertaining. They might flock to that one rather to someone like, well, I don't know who this person is. Even so, the video might be good, maybe good quality. Again, it may be subjective, but their time is limited and uh, they might not watch it. I mean, something like that. So it is unfortunate that even so, the game itself almost polished. I know that it needs a little bit work with the content and the service, whatever. The game itself, like I said, the character model, the game, how it flows, how it runs, there's no bug. It's just that it can't relate to someone. You're paying $40. You got to pay online. And there you go. And that someone probably did try to say, hey, you know, let's not have this ugly character. Even so, like I said, the model character in the respect of design aesthetic may be good. But most people are like, well, I can't really relate to this character. It's hard for me to appeal to this character. I don't want to look at some more. Yeah, it sucks. You can have like a bad animation, but if there's fan service, they might flock to that one to a better animation, but there's like politics behind it. What happens? There you go. So thoughts about this toxic positivity? I don't think it's a good idea. And like I said, the key thing is balance. You can't be too negative, but you can't be too positive. Well, you can't sugarcoat. That's probably it. That a lot of people had said that this is not going to work. And it showed. Concord showed that the character model... Did not appeal to your consumer. They did not want to put their money in. Why is it that to some extent that a lot of people sort of talk about the idea factor games? Because people who like Japanese RPG that has anime waifu, there are people who's willing to put money in. And there are some, including myself, who support Idea Factory International. Yeah, their games, don't get me wrong. I'm a me, I am a fan of them, but to some extent, their games, they're not at high quality. The people behind it, are, well, believe it or not, they're a support developer in the past. So they're like a low tier, but people can relate. People can understand. People are a fan. They're willing to put in money in to something that they are a fan of. And there are some when it comes to Idea Factory game, believe it or not, even the Atomic games, there are people who are buying them and they can relate to the story, to the characters. With Concord, it's like, well, it's all about DI. You can tell. It is DI there. I also want to add this about Concord that it seemed on the Steam page, there are some updated files that said F2P or free-to-play. So rumor has it that this game might be updated to a free-to-play game trying to salvage whatever they can with Concord. Who knows if it is true? Well, best wishes to Sony and Firewalker about it. Again... Even so, it might help because, again, as of right now, Foam Star is free to play and I'm playing it. And I'm not going to lie. It's kind of enjoyable to some extent, but that's a different story there. So, yes, it seemed that the Steam page is sort of updating its file by saying free to play. And if it's true, well, we'll see what happened. But technically, like I said, whether you like or not, Concord really... What's a failure, whether you like it or not. So anyway, yes, it is unfortunate that this game, Concord, costs $400 million. 
And uh, there was a lot of toxic positivity in the development. And again, if it is true, that's bad. Right now, even so that Colin Moriarty said that it was verified, there are some that's kind of say that, well, I don't know if it's true or not. It's kind of hard. But right now, a lot of people are f- feeling it. They kind of believe that this might be true, that there is some, a lot of problem with Concord. And like I said, the biggest unfortunate is that Herman Holtz, who used to be the head guy from Gorilla, who did Zero Dawn and Kill Zone, is the CEO now because Jim Ryan left. And if he, it is true that he's championed that game Concord, I can understand with the first person shooter, but the politics behind it, that's kind of concerning there. So, But we have to wait and see what happened. It is unfortunate as of right now also that PlayStation, as of right now, are in a Concord tax. So you got to keep it in mind. I don't know how long they're going to be. So they're doing whatever it takes to find ways to make money to try and uh, recuperate from Concord. Of course, you follow Horizon Zero Dawn, the digital storefront. Used to be $20. They raised it to $40. So $10 more, you can have the remastered version, which is kind of unfortunate. But as of right now, they're doing whatever it takes to recuperate from Concord. Remember, Nintendo did this in 2012 to 2014 with the Wii U tax. The Wii U failed. They were doing whatever it takes to make money doing Amiibo, scarcity about it because they didn't know it was going to sell. They were trying to be safe. According to Iwata, of course, in YouTube, Content ID, if you know what that story is. So it's the same thing. So as of right now with Sony, expect them to do something that's not going to be consumer-friendly because they got to do whatever it does for a Concord tax. It sucks. Anyway, with that, I'll see you guys later.